Hello everybody, welcome to the Soundtest Room. Today we are taking a look at how to synchronize Visual Synthesizer VS Synth with your door, with with any door. I'm going to use BAM because it's also made by Imaginando. And it's really, really simple stuff once you get your head around it, right? So I have this very basic pattern that we're going to use for Visual Synthesizer. Now, because I'm going over two tracks, I'm going to go to the master channel. So you would do this on any door. Go to the master and I am going to insert Visual Synthesizer here in the effects slot. So we know it's an audio unit. I'm just going to go and search for VS. OK, and then just tap on this to open it and it will open with the default patch, which is this. Now I'm going to expand this a little bit so you can see. OK, so this is the default patch, right? Um, and you'll see that it's moving around on its own. This is because of this control here, noise, controls this. Glow controls this. Radius, let's see, you can't see, so I'm going to just put some glow on. Radius is this. OK, so you can also add other layers, but let's start with this layer. OK, so let's start with the basic layer and this the same kind of thing will apply to each layer. However, some of this stuff will change when you change a layer and I'll, I'll quickly cover that as well. But let's do this. Right. So glow. Let's just make it a little bit more like this. First of all, what you want to do is we want to go here and you see you've got your LFOs here and you have four of them. You have your envelope here. Now, this is good if you're using it with a MIDI import, but I just want to show you how to, you can sync all this up with your door, right? So I'm going to use the um, audio module here. So this is the AM, this is the audio modulation. And we can see that here it says AM and we have four of them. Okay, so you'll see one, two, three and four. We're going to stick with one for now. All right. Now, if I press play, you'll see that there is some activity going on there with audio coming in. This happens automatically, but there's nothing going on here. So I'm going to move the threshold up here. OK, so now you'll see that the uh, threshold is passing the threshold, but quite high up on the uh, input. OK, so I'm going to go to my matrix now and choose where are we see uh, audio module one and I am going to be looking for the radius so you have three pages of modulation radius now watch this right I'm going to push this up now and this will start to pulse with the beat okay and it will pick up each time there's a until we go past the point of the threshold so every time there's a a, a, a a peak here this will pulse to the beat of that okay so that's quite straightforward right so let's just stop this for a sec let's move this over so we have x and y Let's double, double tap that to reset in the center and let's add in another one here. OK, so go to the second element or layer or material, long hold, look for materials. And I'm going to stay in factory. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and you will see this is the uh, default one, which is called Wobbly Ring. I'm going to add that in. Right. I'm going to switch it on and I'm going to move it over a little bit. But I'm going to turn the noise off and I'm going to bring the radius down a little bit. OK, like that. Now, I'm going to show you another method you can use with the audio modulation, which is very, very cool. All right. So we know that we have two of these now, this one and this one. And if I press play now, you'll see this one's just pulsing away. However, in our audio modulations here, audio modulation one, AM one, we have it set to gate, as you know, so this will respond every time it goes over the threshold. Every time audio goes over that threshold, this is going to trigger this ring. I'm going to switch this to spectrum and watch what happens now if I turn, the, turn it on. 
the lower part of the spectrum is only picking up the bass, right? But if I change to the upper part, let me just, it's picking up on the snare. So lower, bass. You go there. Now, now this is cool, right? Let's stop this now. Let's go on to, uh, this is our second layer we're on now, so that's cool. Let's go on to this, Audio Modulation 2. Let's click on the spectrum and let's go where the snare is going to hit, right? So let's go into here. On our AM2, I'm going to bring up the radius a bit for this one. Okay. And see what happens now when I press play. So let's make some adjustments. Let's move our spectrum to the end where we know the snare is. And now we've got bass snare, bass snare, bass snare because we've used the spectrum mode on both of our oscillators, on both of our uh, audio modulators. But we've set the range to be the bass range for there and on the second one, this one for there like that. So that's also very, very cool. Now we can also change the color of either of these. So if I tap on this one here, we can go, right, let's have this second one to be this red, reddish color like that. Let's go off like this. Okay. And now we could also use, say, the, um, or we could add in another layer. Let's add in another layer. Okay. So let's engage this and go to materials. And this time we'll find, you can use anything you like, but we'll use, let's use this, this fiery ball thing here. And let's switch it on and it'll appear in the middle. Let's take the size down a little bit. Okay. And let's modulate the X position like this, but we'll use an LFO this time. Okay. So instead of using the AM, we use an LFO, but I will synchronize it to the tempo. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use LFO1 to move the X position of this red ball. So make sure I'm selected on the element I want to move. Go into my matrix now and find LFO1. And I need to look for X position and then move this. Like that, you see? Very cool. And if we go to our LFO, we can change the synchronized rate. We could have it to be a square. And this is in sync now. We can speed it up to say, oh, let's see, one quarter, which will be on every beat. Go faster if you want to. Slow is really cool. And then you can say, well, you know, what's the speed of this thing doing? And then we could affect the rotation. So you know it's spinning round. Like that. But this is, you could also use an LFO to control the rotation speed. So reset that to nothing. Go to another LFO. Go here to the matrix and go, oh, look, I found rotation, LFO2. See, it's now rotating, depending on what LFO2 is doing. And it's doing a, a, a sample and hold. So let's have that be a sign like this. Let's add a background in on this one. So long hold, go with materials, maybe this one, switch it on. And now let's tear, say, the brightness down like this. And again, you can apply transform like this to one of the LFOs. Let's apply transform to the threshold here. OK, so we know we're on number four. We want threshold on AM modulation number three. So AM number eight, modulation number three, we want to look for threshold. Let's find it. Uh, is it threshold? No, transform two, sorry. 
transform two, transform two, AM number three. And that's going to transform every time it passes this threshold like that. And if we take it up above, it won't. If we take it down below, it's going to be more action packed sort of thing. And you can increase the gain like this. You also have attack and release. So it'll be smoother. Or you can have it very, very fast like this. Awesome stuff. We can also change the alpha position. And this last one here. So you have eight places you can add elements or materials, right? And then you just assign what part of what's on here to whatever modulation source you want, whether it be an LFO, or if you have the sync for the LFOs and stuff, like we have on the first one here, but they can all be independent, you know, you don't have to have them synced. It's very cool. And you can slow them down, of course. You could add another, like on number five, let's add another shape. Let's add something in the materials here. And you've got lots of these if you bought the extras sort of thing, maybe this one. Let's switch, switch it on and that'll appear in the middle. Let's take the speed of that down, the size, here we go. Um, the inner, the outer, and then again, you can apply effects to this, but we can also use this one, which is B. And if we long hold on that, we can go to our photos and we can find a photo to install, maybe like uh, one of these sound test room ones. I'll just open this, I'll switch that background on, and you'll see that that's in the background now. We can have the scale but we can't modulate this, this stuff, I don't think, anyway, so. You can't modulate the background images, okay? But you can, of course, adjust them to suit, but it's a background image, so you can't, you just put it in there. And there you go, guys, that is basically how you apply modulation to be synced to the door. It's very simple. All you need to do is make sure you're selected on the material or layer you want. And at any time, of course, you can turn off layers and work on just one layer. Let's turn off that background image for the start off like that. Um, so, yeah. Don't know why I can't turn off my background image now. We could remove it though, I guess. Um, reset it, yeah. And now you could just go to here and work on either of these two. Like just say, turn that off on and just have a mess around with this one. So guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys later. Ta-ra. I think I've got one still turned off here. I know, they're all on. So there you go. That's how you do it.